welcome to Nerdy Four, the podcast where we find out what people are nerdy for. I'm your host, Amy Brown. On this episode, we have Matthew English. He is an Atlanta-based comic. He is what people call in our little community my work husband because we spend so much time uh, doing stand-up together. Uh, our, our styles complement each other, so we like to travel around and co-headline things. Uh, Matthew is wonderful. He has been, He's a regular at the Laughing Skull Lounge in Atlanta. He was uh, one of the finalists in the Cleveland Comedy Festival. He is a killer on the stage and the sweetest man in a, any room. Please enjoy this episode. Hello, welcome to Nerdy Four, the podcast where we find out what people are nerdy for. My name's Amy Brown, and here today I am interviewing Matthew English. Matthew has a degree in English from Georgia State University, and he's been doing stand-up comedy in the Atlanta area for 10 years. Oh, nine years this year. Oh, We're sorry. almost at 10. We can round up. Okay. I've been doing comedy for 10 years. 10 years. All right. And boy, Matthew- are my arms tired. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew English. What are you nerdy for? I'm nerdy for a lot of things. I, um, uh, I'm a big purveyor of, of Marvel action movies. Gross. I know you hate it. Um, I, uh, fitness. Uh, I'm Interesting. Okay, interested. go with fitness. Let's go with fitness. Fitness. What about fitness? I started working at a gym about six months ago. Um, I lost a bunch of weight in 2020. And uh, it was really weak. I lost a lot of muscle mass. Uh, and so I started going to a gym like two years ago and then started working at that gym because it's fun. It's oh. fun to. So you got employment out of it. I did. And some I muscles. Had... And some muscles. Because you're looking, re- a... you're one of the sexiest comics, not to like me to you in my private abode, but you are one of the ha- most handsome comics in Atlanta slash the world right now. Thank you. <laughs> I will take that compliment, even though it is wildly false. How often do you work out? Uh, well, not, you know, it's funny, not as much now that I work at the gym. Because uh, the times when it would be most, I go to like a group, it's like a group fitness weightlifting studio in Atlanta. Um, and the times when it's most convenient for me to work out uh, are now the times I work. So it's, I can't like work out with the class. So it's. Oh, that seems lame. I think you should work out with the class and double time it. Uh, yeah, you I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll hop on the floor and do some push-ups with them. Double you know? dip. Yeah, yeah. Well, it depends on. I'm there for their safety, so I gotta, I gotta keep my eyes on them, making sure no one but gets hurt. Okay, you're there for their safety. How much yeah. do you weigh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 165 pounds right now. Okay, and how much do the weights weigh that you're gonna take off the, these dead bodies? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm squatting my body weight so i can at least pick up 165 pounds if it's suspended <laughs> on a machine no no machines <laughs> off free the ground. all free weights okay yeah. so if okay that's good to know like, well i mean like okay well, the squat is already up in the air sorry like, yeah i was gonna squat, say, pick it up, yeah squat, but, but i'm a feeling like if someone was actually in danger the adrenaline would kick in like you know like, well, it's not oh. your child what if it's some bitch i no. swore within the first seven minutes <laughs> <laughs> I it's like a family at my gym. I love all Aww. of them like they're I thought my, you were aren't you dating your family at the gym? Are you I, No, I don't know. I have a boyfriend, but I don't know him from the gym. That's okay. not where I know him from. <laughs> Just well, checking. Um double dip, double dip, double dip. All the dipping. Get money, get Arm a workout. Dips, uh, tricep dips. That's that's what we do at the gym. And get a taste. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very um, our clientele is very gay. It's in the heart of Midtown Atlanta. Um, if you want to come work out with me, I'm coming to Atlanta to work out with Matthew. Yay! Yeah. Okay. So how much like have you gained a certain amount of muscle from starting to do all of this? When I started coming to the gym, I weighed 140 pounds. Oh my! You? Oh my yeah. gosh! Yeah. I, I just see like a, a wet lost puppy in the rain. <laughs> Homeless with a little bag of, over his shoulder on a stick. Just, just a little knapsack. Do, just do you want to tell? So you've, so you've gained 25 pounds of muscle. Yeah. That's amazing. That's, and then yeah. how, how many times a week do you work out? At anywhere. Well, so like at the height of it, I was working out like five to seven times a week. Sometimes five two to, a day. That's all. That's every day of the week is five to seven. Yeah. That's a lot of working out. That's a lot of working out. But it, no wonder it, they gave you a job. They probably just assumed you worked there because you kept coming every day. Because I just kept day. showing up. Yeah, and I won a T-shirt for like a competition we did at the gym. So I had like a branded T-shirt that I wore seven days a week to the gym. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so like you must just work here. Did they you do don't the, have a job. Did they do the competition in lieu of a job interview? They're just like, <laughs> hey, 
let's just do a competition. Whoever wins will be like, do you want a job? It was kind of one of those things where it was like I was going there so much. One of the trainers, the gym's been open for five years. One of the trainers who had been there for five years moved. And so when he moved, I was like, what if I just like started working here? Because uh, I do com. My other job is comedy. And I don't make enough at comedy to afford a gym membership. So I need to work there to work out there. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 I, my theory about comedy is in Atlanta is there's one $20 bill that's being won and it's being <laughs> Venmoed around, around the, city. the city. Every night, the $20 bill does a couple circuits. Yeah. No, we all just hand that same. And some of the comics uh, use it to do drugs. So oh. that's yeah, a lot of them do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so naive. <laughs> la, 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 la. Everyone's Not happy. Yeah, everyone's just, everyone's We're just, a bunch of nerds. Everyone's just going in the bathroom in a group because they're friends. Right? If they're just so friends. You need a pep talk. Maybe you yeah. had a bad set because you're on drugs. Um, we've never gone to the bathroom together. Well, let's. We've already slept in the same bed. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. There's a selfie to prove. We it. could go to. The, if you're in the bathroom with me, something terribly wrong has happened. That means I'm throwing up and you're there to hold my hand. That's, yeah, no, that's. Yeah. That's, we're not going to the bathroom to do drugs. We're going there to, like, gossip. Oh, that sounds. We can Amy just gossip. Amy Brown in does here. not gossip, though. I don't like to say anything not. poorly about anybody, which is not going to make for a very exciting podcast, unfortunately. <laughs> don't worry. Me... I'll say bad things about other people. <laughs> That's this, perfect. I dubbed this the year of Spicy Matthew. I'm done. I have oh. a, a humble brag. I feel like I've got a very good reputation in the community for being a nice guy. Like there was a roast we did as a community and like a couple of comics on the roast on the dais were just like, I've got nothing bad to say about Matthew. He's such a nice guy. Not anymore. Here... Shots fired across the bow. <laughs> I'm coming. done being nice. I'm oh done. Oh my gosh. You're coming out again. Again. And now you're going to be a sassy a queen. Guy. Sassy queen? Or is he a Mar what Marvel character would you be as this new, uh, are you going to say it like it is, Matthew? Or are you going to invent some shit about people, Matthew? Like, what oh, are you going to oh, do? I've done that in the past. I've, oh I've made God. rumors. But they were pos I made positive rumors about people. That That's something oh I did God. in the past. Oh my God. That's lovely. Yeah. That's not mean, Matthew. So that my favorite one, I worked in an office for years, and um, I started this rumor that um, one of the employees that I worked with, someone, some say, peer of mine, we're, we're the same same position, um, that she was the former, she was a former dancer, a former gymnast, Olympic level gymnast, who got injured and then became a choreographer and worked with Paula Abdul. <laughs> And I started this rumor just in my office. Was this before the internet so no one could like fact check it? Well, this was like five years ago. Oh my and God. so it, it, when it finally, so then I became like a trainer at our office, right? So they would fly people into our office. I would teach them the software that we used and then they would go home. And I remember like I had a, a class in from Tampa, Florida. And so it's like sister company. And they, um, <laughs> I was like, okay, so it's like, let's just break for lunch. Like, I showed you guys where the bathrooms are, where the break room is. Like, does anyone have any other questions? Just any, anything that you want to like recap from the morning or any questions about the office and like where things are, if, like where nearby food is. If you, you know, you guys have a rental car, you can go get it. And they're like, we actually have a question. We heard someone in this office used to work with Paula Abdul. <laughs> oh, shoot. Who is it? I was like, oh my God, it left our office and went to another office in that another state. That line has legs. Yeah. It's traveling. It's like, beyond you now. I was like, her name is Dawn. She sits at the cubicle over there. Go say hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when the like the butterfly flaps its wings across the country and then Paula Abdul worked with your coworker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was exactly that. Yeah, so I have I have okay. I do have a history. So you know how, so what people. I'm hearing is you know how to lie. So your superhero yeah. uh would be someone who's very good at lying. There's is Superman Marvel? Do not text me. Do, that I'm, they're they're, they're yeah. coming for you. Say do not text me. I don't know. People get in trouble for Don't give people things. your number. Yeah. Uh, I'm not supposed to give people my number? <laughs> oh, no. I'm doing it's on my Instagram. Um, um, yeah, I guess like. So yeah. you know how to lie. You know how to spin a, a tail. I like to say that I'm a great actor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so are you so going to do are you going to do bad lies about people or. or in this I'm not going to start rumors about it. The Atlanta comedy scene. I'm not going to do that. That's not my. We have such a sweet scene. We I, really do. It is like lovely. a family. But is, families yeah. fight. Some, sometimes you don't need to just roll over. Are you going to tell and it like the it middle is? child? Oh, I'm start telling feel, like it is. I feel like the middle child. Do you feel child. like the middle child? You haven't got enough attention. There are zero pictures of you, except for when, when you're not wearing your shirt. The only time anyone takes photos of me is when I'm at the underwear comedy party at like some costumed event. You look so handsome without a shirt, though. It's really, it's 
a, a public service. I can give you a list of comics in the scene who look better with a shirt with their shirts oh. off. Well, that's a show we should book. That's the show we should. <laughs> that's yeah. The next show. That's do we do we want that list right now? Um, Number one, Amy Brown. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not that good. Um, so, oh no, I'm, just, I'm like I'm. Are you going to start saying I'm so curious about this new this new day you're going to have with your um adventure? So sassy sassy man instead of Superman, and he just tells it like it is. Like, girl, you look like hot mess today. I mean, um. <clears throat> Just, just keeping it real. That's my plan. I'm, I'm done being fake nice to people that I don't need to be fake nice to. That's really what it is. I'm not, I'm not going out of my way to be spicy to people. Mm -hmm. But if they're asking for spice, they're getting a level ten. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> red yeah. pepper flakes, chili powder, cayenne pepper. I, I feel like in the south in though, the fake nice is the status quo. Fake nice, you walk. Oh my god, how you doing today? So good to see you. And so, like, that's the status quo. And so, if you don't get to that level just to say hello, they're like, Oh my god, are you okay? Like, are you mad at me? You, yeah, not yet. Are you from Keep the north? Questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Do I have an accent? Do you want to tell, do do tell everyone um, how you lost your weight? Because that's usually what people are very curious about. That's, yeah, and it's the crux of one of my jokes. Um, uh, if I'm known for two things in this comedy scene, in the nine years I've been in comedy, um, it's for being very dirty and very dark. Um, those are the two things I'm known for, dark and dirty, but with a smile. And um, <laughs> so that's uh, the the bit, we when we go into the bit about uh, losing 40 pounds in in 2020, um, it's because my mother passed away. And that's the punchline. <laughs> Um, my mother died of cancer. Um, I lost a bunch of weight, so it was just real sad. And uh, and yeah, so that's so so it touch. I touch a lot on and I my history of dark comedy. You know, even before my mom died, I was doing dark jokes because I've dealt a lot with depression, anxiety problems, um, and I am very comfortable talking about those things. And I find talking about them is a great way to start a conversation because mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have depression, anxiety, and we don't talk about it enough, especially men. So you've heard it here first. If you want to lose twenty pounds, you kill just kill your, your mother. mother. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's yeah, that's when people ask just me for step diet. Step on tips. that crack. You <laughs> break, her, <laughs> break her back. Go for it. Yeah. No, that's. I want my mom to stay alive forever. Yeah. No. Uh, we all and I, I. A lot of us do. I should say most of us do. Some people don't have great relationships with their parents, especially queer people. I'm very lucky to have have and have had um, two parents who were so wonderful through the through the coming out process I, there, there were learning curves for everybody involved um you know and it took it did take some distancing and then coming back together in the early in the you know first couple years after i came out um it definitely we were always very close we we're a very close-knit family and then um i came out and it put some tension in the family and then we came back together and we were even closer so what happened when your brother came out yeah and then <laughs> seven years later my brother came out. I have a brother who's seven years younger than me. Uh, to the family, we both came out at 16. Um, it kind of did, like, throw a little bit of salt in that wound that was already there, you know, or it kind of reopened that wound um, what was, in a weird way. What was their dis – like, what was their feeling? Like, I – it's, uh, for someone our generation, I would be like, of course, everyone's a little bit gay. You might be the most gay. Hugs, like it doesn't ma matter. What what was the distance there? The tension? The, the tension came from, my, my dad's older. He was born in 1945. And so he, the era he grew up in was very different for gay people than it is now. Not that things are great for gay people right now all the time, okay? But things are a lot better than they were in 1945. And so like when he, he said that, you know, when he was in high school, 16, 17, 18 year olds used to, guys he went to high school with, you know, he never participated, but they would go get, you know, Millers, go get drunk in the parking lots of gay bars. And he grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and he would wait for gay, there was like one gay bar in Cleveland, and it was this big, big old secret, but they would wait in the parking lot and beat the shit out of grown ass men, like 40, mm. 50, 60 year old men coming out of a gay bar. That's so sad. In the, late 50s early 60s that sounds like a movie i watched yeah, yeah it's yeah and so that's that's what my dad thought being gay was in yeah yeah he was worried was to like get beaten up he was worried about, worried about you know, your safety it was all about my safety it was it was that's he and he also didn't understand 
you know, it not being a choice, not being something I could change. And he's, you know, so it, a lot of it initially came from like, why would you choose a life that's harder? And he thinking about like putting myself at risk for, you know, violence against me and mm -hmm. just adversity in the workplace or, you know, just anywhere, yeah. you know, just any kind of system. Uh, when I came out, uh, just out of my mom's a vagina, and yeah. she's like, a, a girl, why would you choose to have a, that wage gap? <laughs> yeah, that's good. Right, Henry VIII. <laughs> like, you had a choice what in a it. Dumb baby. I don't know who controls this. Oh. Um, but yeah, so that's, and so when my brother came out, my, my, uh, I am the middle child. Um, so it's, um, of comedy and your house. Of comedy and my, my family. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, I'm always the, uh, the, the mediator among everybody. And so, and my brother is the baby and, uh, would butt heads with my dad. So my dad didn't give my brother any grief about being gay or, you know, why would you choose a harder life? And so he just kind of remembered when I did it and kind of, so seven years after I came out. Uh, it was 23 then and he uh there was a little bit of tension between us again and but by then i was you know an adult and i knew what was going on i'm like we're not doing this again we're, <laughs> lauren calm down oh <laughs> it's gonna be fine <laughs> sweet lauren he's such a nice man he is such a nice he comes man. to all your shows and then you do all this comedy like raging gay comedy and he's there and he is laughing and having the Here's best my time favorite thing about my dad. i so, love it so doing dirty full, full circle <laughs> doing dirty comedy with in front of my dad uh he Likes to prove – he has told me before, one, that he's comfortable with my dirty jokes, but also comfortable about the jokes about my dead mom, his wife. Um, so uh, so and I always tell him, I'm like, hey, if you don't want to be in the room for this joke, like here's the one that comes before it. Like this joke is too dirty or this joke is about mom. You know, it's like this is the joke before it. So when you hear that joke, if you want to leave, go. Um, but he stays – he sticks it out every time. Um, he stays through the whole show, and he likes to prove to me that he's comfortable with it by laughing harder at the dirty jokes. Oh, is which, it a ruse or is it real? It's – I. if he laughed a normal level at all of them, I think it would be fine. But there was one time he – we did a show at your house in your backyard, mm -hmm. and he came and took – we filmed the show, and he was taking pictures uh, with a camera. And I don't know if he just – if he noticed it, but he kept he kept going like side to side, like across the back of the audience. We had, oh, I'm sorry, bump the mic. Uh, going side to side across the, the back of the audience, and we had the camera on one side. And he ended up by the camera every time I told a dirty punchline. <laughs> and so on top of him like actively laughing louder at dirty jokes and being right next to the camera, it was just like, it was too much. A, a lot of those tapes had to be lost and not posted on social media because it was like there's some weird old man laughing really hard about <laughs> <laughs> about a joke about you getting fisted like <laughs> oh i'm sorry no, no dirty stuff for seven minutes I'm oh sorry. no you're fine um <laughs> oh yeah but he's i mean I was, is it all copacetic now i have a question yes. for you um the I feel like where I grew up in upstate New York um being uh whatever your sexuality was was acceptable i i didn't i didn't hear of anybody getting beat up of course like at all um i could be wrong um but the folks i hung out with had wonderful lives basically um what's it like being in the south and doing comedy on that topic However, I just realized that might be a bummer for us to talk about. So we don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. Uh, no, I mean, well, you, it, it doesn't take much to talk about. Like, it's just, it's, there's two sides to it, right? Where, you know, there, there are comics who from the outside look at it like, oh, he gets booking because they want to book a gay comic because, you know, it's like, uh, a, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um. Oh my gosh. Diversity like, hire. Like a diversity hire, right? Like, like, yeah, it's like I'm the diversity. It's like, okay, well, we checked the LGBTQ box on this set list, and now we're going to book the rest of it we can book, which is whoever we want. But it's like, and they look at it like, oh, you get so many opportunities because there's fewer gay comics in town, and they're always looking to add at least one, you know, queer person to a set list, and blah, blah. And I'm like, the flip side to that is, isn't that sad? Like, <laughs> isn't that sad that we do that? That we feel it necessary to have to do that because representation can be so low and if we don't oh. at time and it works the same for uh people of color in the comedy scene where it's like we people who book shows will actively look to make sure that their lineup is diverse and it's like not that anyone some of my favorite comics in town are straight 
queer, you know, people of color, you know, whatever it is. I've, I've got favorite comics in every sect that you can, you know, try and divide us by. But I, it is something that, like, bookers actively think about. But it's it's sad that we still look at it that way. And it's like, you know, it's you you don't you can't quantify the missed opportunities you can quantify like oh i was added to this many shows probably because i they wanted someone queer but you can't quantify the number of opportunities i have missed for that same factor and i know for a fact there are places in this city that will not book me or won't book me as often because i am gay Mm. that has been it's it's all hush hush they don't talk about it and i'm not going to say the names out loud because then I won't get booked at all. As it is, I get booked a little bit. But I wonder too about like for touring for like a small comedy club in a small town in Oklahoma where the guy who books it is 70 years old or whatever. Like if if and possibly doesn't have an open mind. There's yeah. definitely people who have open minds who are 70 years old and live in Oklahoma and they're not booking diversity like that and then i mean not that you <laughs> sounds like a great job don't yeah. you want to go to oklahoma to I a small go to town? oklahoma and do a show yeah yeah but uh i wonder if it, it impedes booking I, right i feel like i would love to talk to like mateo lane or like some other he's prettier than me shut up no one's prettier <laughs> than you you're my pretty girl <laughs> oh. um no but it's um but but well it's true and, and and just watching the way audiences react in smaller towns like i just did a, a show out of town in a smaller southern city um where i kind of you, you kind of walk into a comedy club or in, in a room in a space and you kind of survey the audience right so i had a plan walked in saw that the audience skewed very white and older than i anticipated um we're talking probably like average age 55 um, in a tight room. So it, I kind of adjust, I was like, okay, I probably should clean up what I was planning on doing, do some, you know, family friendly, friendly comedy, you know, no swearing, no sex. Like that's, that's where we're at. I think these jokes will work better here. And then I listened to the comics before me perform their, they would pepper in some dirty jokes. You know, it's like we all kind of do that. Well, we'll throw out a slightly suggestive joke. A little as bit like, naughty. Test the waters. Dip a toe into <laughs> oh. the... And if, if it gets a reaction... Then you know. You yeah. go a little bit dirty. Mm. A little bit dirty. And it works the same with any topic. A little political. And then you can get a little bit more political. And, you know, any any topic you want, you want that can be controversial. You, you test the waters like that. But I was... The benefit to closing out a show is that you get to watch all the comics before you bomb or succeed with different types and so i was watching all the comics before me do dirty material and that across their whole set was getting the best reaction it was a tough room regardless of what you're doing (laughs) but that was their best reaction so like in the wings of the stage i was like you know what? i'm gonna do some dirty stuff like let's i'm gonna put in some dirtier stuff than i was anticipating let's let's just try it and see how it works and did not get the same reaction as um, straight comics did no. to dirty stuff. And so that that just happens sometimes. It's it's I, my jokes were no more or less dirty, you know, than anyone else's. Is it, it the just, characters were different? The characters were different. It was yeah. this is not the kind of sex that makes babies. Harumph. Okay. So back to Marvel. Who would be Oh my god. The who would be your character that goes throughout the country and just flips the switch in all of everyone's brain that's like all these jokes I just laughed about that were about boys and girls together be just as funny about two boys or two girls or two theys or they and the she all the things. What would be the name of that Marvel character? Go. I with the name. Oh, I'm making my own character. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know any of the Marvel so characters. What are some of the Marvel characters? I do like the idea if you just go by uh, Switch because you know that's yeah, right. Ooh, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's one funny. night with me that, and one, you'll switch. I was, I was making a different joke. That <laughs> that's yeah. That's oh. We, we're gonna whisper it. to Amy what a switch is. What's a okay. switch? <laughs> Oh, that's which is a fairly recent term. TikTok has put that term out there because back in the day, in the gay community, we called it verse. A Mm. top or a bottom, or but in the larger queer community, it's a switch. Okay, it comes. I think it comes from the lesbian community, Uh, and now it's kind of just a Gen Z thing. I kind of, I kind of knew of it from uh, more of like uh, BDSM kink community. Oh, there too. Uh, That's uh, fair. Like Dom or Sub or Switch or a Switch. But now, 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 you know, everyone can get a little gay or more kinky. Honestly, 
Thanks. Yeah, they are. TikTok told so many people that they were queer who had no idea. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because the TikTok algorithm can read you for filth without you knowing it, telling everyone that they, you know, surprised you're on the spectrum or <laughs> <laughs> surprised you're a little gay because they start getting content. That's fascinating. I've got a lot of history More. stuff coming my way. Because you're a big old history. Nerd. You can't. If you <sighs> want a history lesson. <laughs> For a car ride with me. <laughs> Go take one night in Richmond, Virginia, at the Sandman Comedy Club with Amy Brown. Get to town a few hours early and then agree to go for a walk. There's a lot because of history she there. will walk you around <laughs> Richmond and tell you what happened there during the Revolutionary War. A particular favorite era of hers. <laughs> I'm sorry. She I'm a it. nerd. I love it. I'm trying to have to work history into my jokes and stop talking about my family so I don't embarrass them. You've got a new them. joke about the first Ferris wheel at the Chicago World's Fair. I do. And it's gone crazy on, t on TikTok, actually. It's hilarious. Because I didn't realize it. I accidentally made a joke dirty about the first Ferris wheel ever. Uh, because a woman jumps, this is true, like a woman, like the Ferris wheels, when they first were made, uh, the first one ever was like these carts of 20 people at a time that would go up and go around. And one of them, a guy started, have like was afraid of heights, started panicking, and a lady jumped on his head and put her skirts over his face and uh, to calm him. Like how you calm a bird. Like, you're like yeah, <laughs> to tell a bird in a cage to go night night. And it went up and around and like um, he calmed down because he couldn't see what was happening and he's like cool we're gonna get off and then it kept going and going <laughs> so they had to go around again and they were not gonna stop it um i and i say she canceled she stopped his panic attack with her noise canceling thigh phones and i didn't realize that um in my mind she's just wearing underpants and sitting on this man's head and no it's just you're like he jumped on his i think the word you used in the video that you posted was like she jumped on his face sat on his sat face. on his face sat that's on what, his face that's and dirty i have got so many comments from men like can't wait to have a panic attack on a ferris wheel lining up for the ferris wheel right now <laughs> like <laughs> i have to go read this comment section can't wait to fake a panic attack they i i realize now i'm oh i'm talking about women sitting on a man's face yeah. sexually and i thought i was talking about history I am so naive. So I'm sure it happened back in history. I'm sure everyone sat on people's faces. But to be cl doing your comedy for several occasions, chopping it up into clips, you, getting the subtitles, put, reading the subtitles, and then posting it, and then getting the men like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's sexual. I, that's my in my clean joke material. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> It is a clean joke. Okay, so I know what a switch is now. You I know, know what a switch is now. Men's it's not is just or a gaming space. console by Nintendo. It is. Okay. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. All right, should we talk? I was going to say we should talk about something fun and happy. And okay. then the next thing on the list is depression. depression. <laughs> Do you want to talk about depression? It's fun when you're not in it. Are you in it right now? I'm. I'm. I'm diagnosed with major depressive disorder, so technically I'm always in it, which is yeah, yeah not to brag, <laughs> yeah, not to brag, um, which is different from clinical depression, which is like a bout of depression that 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 can strike anybody. Oh, you don't know the calls coming from inside the house. Um, <laughs> but major depressive disorder um is what I was diagnosed with at the age of 16, um, and because oh, I tried to kill myself. Um, it's more fun when you say it like you're from the <laughs> 20s. Oh, <laughs> this transcontinental line coming through. What's that? <laughs> Depression. <laughs> so, uh, please hold the wire. I tried to Hindenburg well. myself. Okay, so, so <laughs> um, <Kablooey. laughs> So, uh, yeah. So, uh, major depressive disorder, um, generalized anxiety disorder. Um, those are my my official diagnoses. Um, from a, a very lovely psychologist who I saw on again, off again for the next like ten years. Um, uh, oh. and. Yeah, because I would feel fine, and then I wouldn't be fine. It's I'd like go Rachel back and, see her and again. Ross. I'm just like, hey, girl, guess what happened? Oh, I did it again. <laughs> oh no. Um, <laughs> yeah, and so was she a good therapist or amazing? She's okay, amazing. So um, Matthew's still here today, so that's uh, yeah, that's proof. He, she's either a great psychologist or I'm just like really bad at killing myself. Oh, baby. That's just <laughs> added to the list. I can't do. You know, they, something else to be depressed about. <laughs> Jesus Christmas. Um, they say um, 
men actually uh, are better at killing themselves than women. Typically, so, men are more successful because they do you choose more violent uh, means. And uh, like uh, teenage men are uh, the like it's number two killer of teenage men. It's wow, suicide I didn't know that. And car wrecks are number one. Oh, that's so sad. Merry um, Christmas, everyone. Remember when you said we we're gonna talk about something fun? Sorry. But no, it's um, it is serious. It's very important. Um, and if you feel hopeless, reach out to someone. Um, ho- feelings of hopelessness um mm. are usually an indicator that you are close to getting uh, suicidal. Um, that's or you need a nap. I feel I feel hopeless every day at one thirty, and then I take a and nap. you take a nap, and, and then I have better. a coffee, and I you feel... might just be hangry. <laughs> um, it's yeah, that's yeah, and I've got jokes about it too. You know, and and some people I've had I've had a lot of people after a show talking about you know doing jokes about depression, uh, suicide come up to me, and they're like, "Thank you for talking about this." Like I went through something similar, Amen. or had fewer people but still a fair number tell me that it's those jokes are inappropriate they're in they're um they're unkind they're you know this is a serious topic you shouldn't joke about it my opinion on the subject and different people have different theories of comedy on this uh, no subject is off limits for comedy in my opinion there is a right and a wrong way to joke about something um you know this and the, because the, you say there's there's no off limits topics and then like what about rape jokes it's like well if you are a survivor of rape and telling a joke about it is a coping mechanism for you and it st- – worst case is that you've offended someone but started a conversation. I hate that I've offended you talking about suicide, um, I, I, that I've triggered you, that I've offended you, whatever it is. You know, that I'm sorry that you feel this way, but now we can talk about it. I'm off – you know, come talk to me off stage. I'm off stage now. I'm silly, goofy, hoo-hoo, off, uh, on stage. Off stage – Let's have a real talk about it. Like that's I'm down for it. You know, I, we'll start with an apology for offending you. Um, not gonna apologize for my joke. You know, but this is very much what, like sorry you feel that way. But this is a conversation starter in my opinion. And I and that's comedy has a place. There's and some people can't talk about it without telling a joke. Me, I can't. Um, that was you know my number one goal in therapy was like can I get the doctor to laugh. <laughs> I can. That's oh, pretty good. I think it's great you talk about it. I um, I had suicidal thoughts when I was pregnant with my second child. You told me that before. And yeah, yeah that's the lowest I've ever gotten. It was just yeah. When you're like, uh oh, I'm going to kill two people. Don't tell the Republicans. Don't oh, know. <laughs> um, it's yeah, it's real scary. Um, oh, I talked a really bad joke. Oh, I'm ready. To, you tell me. We can cut you it kill out. Yourself while you were pregnant. <laughs> yes. Where did you find a hanger big enough? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> that's really that's good. not good. That's a good. That's a good joke. I liked it. That's a good Georgia joke. So <laughs> oh, I was in Colorado. I would have found someone to do it legally. <laughs> They'd be like, "I'm sure we can hotbox your car enough lar- to like yeah. <laughs> you both of you." <laughs> largest pot brownie ever. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Death by pot brownie. The first woman to overdose. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's. Yeah, d- depression, suicide, very scary, very scary to get that 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 level of darkness. And please reach out to someone. There's, there's, you may feel hopeless, but there's there are people out there who can help you. Um, whatever it is that gets you to that place, you know, it's like a, what a death in the family, a, a loss of job, a loss of home, any like any of the you know, any of the big life changing events. Did that- your depression come back when your mom died? Is that why you lost the weight, or you were just too sad to eat? Because I, I get sad. sad I eat. I eat and drink. I um, really what it was was just like I took up chain smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee. It's like I was just too sad. Like I so I was one too sad to eat, and then on top of that was completely suppressing my app Un- unintentionally. Like it was just that was a byproduct of these things I was doing because my sleep schedule got like I was depressed so I wasn't sleeping so I needed coffee during the day to stay awake so I was drinking so much coffee you did the 1950s uh weight loss program oh man like it and I'll, that, yeah. my grandmother was thin and she drank Sanka all day long Jen Kirkman does a joke about that about losing weight after her divorce um and she's like people ask me how I lost so much weight after my divorce and it's like I stood in front of my tv and smoked cigarettes all day like that's <laughs> but like it's an appetite <laughs> suppressant so I'm like like it works. Don't do it, but it works. Um, and coffee's the same way. Like coffee, another caffeine's another appetite suppressant. So it's, but it's just too sad to eat. I didn't care to eat. I just, I just didn't care. Like it, nothing. Aww. And like, yeah, it's. 
nothing, nothing felt right. You know, anything I did felt off. So it's like the things that I would normally do, like feed myself, sleep, bathe. Like yeah. I didn't want to do any of the, no nothing felt normal. So I started acting abnormally. Okay. Let's talk about Starbucks. Yeah. See, speaking of coffee, <laughs> my heavy coffee addiction, I was already addicted to coffee before I got a job at Starbucks. And now I've been at Starbucks for three years and it's only gotten worse. Hey -o. Hey -o. I drank I drank uh, two ounces of four hour old espresso before a show medicinally. And this guy almost threw up in his mouth. You can't drink espresso that's that old. Okay, so listen. It tell, tell the tell us this is your nerd. Okay, we need to know all of like the words, like the lingo about coffee. The so what happens when a coffee is best served, best best drank immediately after pouring, right? That's when you have that lovely layer of crema on top. That's a little like the light brown foam on top, right? That's mm, crema. Beautiful, the crema. How you spell it? Uh, C R E M A. Um, C R E M A. I want to say it's Italian. Va bene. There you go. Um, could be French. I don't know. A lot of a lot of fancy places with with good coffee. Um, Lots of fancy languages and countries with, with good coffee. Um, uh, Starbucks is terrible coffee. I'll be the first one to say, say that. Tell anybody that. Starbucks is bad coffee. It is over roasted. Like coffee snobs hate Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And I get it. However, I drink coffee for free there. So I <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, yeah. You don't even have to break your twenty dollar <laughs> bill that you get for doing comedy. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. That's that's so that's so true. It's uh yeah. what happens when coffee's been out out after you roast it, it immediately starts getting bitter, is what you told me. And so well, at it, four it, hours it, of bitterness and it tastes it like It oxidizes, garbage. yeah. So it's it oxidizes. starts to taste more 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 uh, bitter than it normally would. But yeah, that's coffee's best enjoyed. And that's why it's Isn't so that how interesting. copper turns green? It oxidizes. Yes. Oh, yeah, so your coffee is it's literally turning green. oxygen. Well, no, that's that's a reaction with copper specifically. But um which I have a fun story about if you ever want to hear it, about um a swimming pool that had on well water, the well water was high in copper. Do you know what speeds up the oxidation process? Throwing chlorine in the pool. The pool turned green? The pool turned green like a penny. Like oh, like oh my God like sea foam green and cloudy because it was the copper coming out of solution in the water. Was this in oxidizing. Georgia? It sounds very Georgia. Yes. Was there an alligator in there too? Uh, no, but one time a bunch of teenagers threw a bunch of uh, crayfish. Crawfish? What do you guys say here? You get crawfish from the crayfish from the crake. It's crayfish. Crayfish. Yeah. Um, in our pool one time, there were like 40 of them and we had to like scoop them all out. That was They're great. delicious. I was a lifeguard for years too. That's something I'm passionate about. Yelling at kids and blowing a whistle. <laughs> <laughs> I was a lifeguard. I'm a nerd for that. Yeah. You were I guess stop, stop, stop running on the deck. Boop. Stop standing yeah. on the turtle. Boop. Yeah. That There's a turtle. You're not supposed to stand on it. Okay. Like a statue it. turtle, not like a, like a real turtle. It's a statue. I'd okay. say both, though. I'd say don't stand on statue turtles or real turtles. Yeah. If you wanted to hurt a turtle, give it a straw. That's I understand. I, I, have, I have a I have a I have a question for you. What's where's the best place you've gotten coffee or or, or espresso from? If, if my current favorite coffee place in Atlanta, East Pole, they do their own roasting. Um, East Pole Coffee. They're all so nice in there. They're wonderful. They're so sweet. Um, Is it also a strip club? No, it's not. Aww, I'm not I going. There's like a nautical thing <laughs> going on. It's great. They've got two or three locations in Atlanta. But I nautical? Go to the... Is a nautical. pole? East pole. East like pole, North like... pole, South yes. pole, East that pole. Kind of pole. Like I can see the gears turning in your head as, as you're putting this all together, and I love it. <laughs> She's I'm not brilliant. quick. Um, but she is. That's the problem. She... <laughs> Sitting on a you. man's face. What's sexual about that? Oh, tell me, internet. I love how dirty you are and then, like, <laughs> missed that one. I don't... I don't get it. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. I'm we'll come back to okay. that. We, we, we'll debrief for that. Um, I, I'm so glad you taught me that coffee, you shouldn't... Uh, microwave it you're not supposed to microwave coffee reheating it uh causes a chemical reaction in the coffee again you start heating up that co it is it is done when it is brewed and if it gets cold reheating it uh kick starts different chemical reactions in the coffee and can change the flavor mm -hmm. so you should not microwave coffee to warm it up again how, how do we feel about um uh keurigs keurigs i hate a keurig i hate it it's 
Thank you. It's just bad coffee. What about like the Nespresso's? There's two different kinds. <sighs> Weigh in. I have both. Speak into the microphone. <laughs> the Nespresso's. I do own an Nespresso. I will say that. Um, I find their coffee. So the, the problem with all of the, you're not supposed to brew coffee unless it's like freshly ground. Any coffee snob will tell you that. That you you grind the beans and then you brew why it. Can't it is we, back to back. Why? Why can't we have just the ground bag from the grocery store? Why can't you use Folgers? And dump and just... it. It's not Folgers. It's Pete's. <laughs> it's Big Bang. That's a science theme. I get the Big Bang Pete's and I pour it into my decorative container. Do you buy pre-ground coffee? Yes. I don't know how like much to grind it and the grinder's this big and every time I use it I spill the coffee fudging everywhere because I have got jazz hands and it's a debilitating problem. You're jittery because you've had too much coffee already. Stop brewing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to know. So why 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 is it that you need to do it like we grind it right away? What's the difference for, between pre ground and then freshly ground surface area? Shut your pie hole. <laughs> the beans are contained in a in a roasted shell, right? But they they're roasted through. So, but you once you grind it, you've exposed it to more oxygen. Oh, the it's flavor. oxidizing. It's getting it's, bitter. I don't know if it's oxidizing necessarily, but it, well, it's not getting more bitter. You're just, it's it, the same way like food goes stale, you know, in a, you know, that's been opened. It's your coffee will go stale faster if it is ground and stored. But even it's, if you put it in, it's not a piece of, it's not like a bread. It's not like what, so a little bit stale is probably going to be fine. A lot stale, you get penicillin. Game changer. No, that's mold. Oh. And actually there is, uh, I just learned about this like weird mold that grows in most of the world's coffee and can like affect your brain. It's traumatic. I'm supposed to stop drinking coffee. It's a whole thing. But oh. it's, it's a whole, oh, like no. not by a doctor, but by like my hippy dippy barista coworker. Also wait. my Starbucks work wife. No, wait. We're not, is there something that's going to make us, is it ha making us have Alzheimer's? Is it no, like the fine. sugar? Or? No, but you see the study about what prevents Alzheimer's? Taking Butt Viagra. Sex. Oh. Both. So everyone, seriously, let's all get bricked up and remember. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> are both of these things? Because one of you said Viagra, one of you said, well, the other one said butt sex. Is both of those true? No, just the Viagra. Well, if you get true. the Viagra, you're gonna want to try everything. You're gonna want. You're gonna be hard for so long. You're gonna be like, what can I stick it in now? Yeah. yeah. Turn around. There's a mailbox over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's indecent exposure. Don't do that. <laughs> Mailboxes are on the outside. Oh. Also, I think that's a federal crime because oh. it's a mailbox, and you can get you, that's, yeah. that's if your nuts. load doesn't have a stamp on it it yeah, can't be delivered a, that's a whole that's a whole other thing we're past the seven minute mark you're not supposed to god damn it's so nasty like, okay like i don't lick my envelopes because <laughs> after covid i want to put my mouth germs on the envelope but i have been coming on the seal to, and i've got a wax steel stamp <laughs> <that I> just... <laughs> okay okay um, crunch so, <laughs> to be opening my okay mail. so we're we're not we're supposed to grind no, it at home it's just to grind it right before you brew it. Who the, who can grind coffee before they've had coffee? This is an imperfect system. Oh. Yeah, no, uh, it's a lot. And I'll be, am I being 100%? Like, I have, like, batch ground my coffee. Like, I'm not a purist about this. I'm just telling you what the coffee snobs would want me to tell you. Okay. Like, when you, you say do, batch, how much, do you, how much do you grind ahead of time? Like, so here's that I have a grinder at home, but it takes forever. It's slow because it's not like an industrial grinder like we have at Starbucks. So I will batch grind like a whole pound. Of, we get a free pound of coffee a week. And so I will oh. take a pound of coffee, batch grind it, take it home. And then that lasts me. Like I'm, honest, I'm, I'm taking mental notes on this because I do buy pre-ground pre, pre coffee. But I, 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 this is convincing me to where I'm going to go and get a grinder you and should then get a start grinder. getting beans. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I can help you. I can help you. So the, the problem with the grinding yourself is the um, – you change the grind uh, so you can grind it really fine. A really fine, so like the finest grind would be like a, a Turkish coffee. That's the fine, and that's actually mm. like, it's almost like sand. Like it's so fine. It's such a fine grind. Or you have like, um, on the flip side of that, a French press is gonna be one of your coarsest grind. We talk about the coarseness of the grind, right? It's it's like um, like a, it's not like sand. Oh, so like a Turkish is more like a, Espresso. Powder sugar, almost like not between powder sugar and granular sugar is <laughs> how fine Turkish coffee grinds are. And then you've got like, um, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, like a French press grind, which is more like, been to like Hilton Head, South Carolina, like their sand, like oh kind of like an Atlantic, Southern Atlantic. I didn't realize sand. we had a Rockefeller on our podcast. <laughs> I'm not allowed back in Hilton Head, and you know why. <laughs> 
it's dirty. I had sex on the beach. Okay, great. Uh, not, so. not just the drink. <laughs> no. Not and there was just a the drink. wedding and a gazebo involved. <laughs> Okay. Good for you. Yes. Good no, for you. not good for Yolo. me. Shame. For shame. <laughs> oh my God. So should I should I be not this is also for the listeners. I'm asking for the listeners. Yeah. Should I be not using a coffee Joel. maker? They know I'm the producer. It's okay. fine. <laughs> we should I, still they know Amy too. Well, you know, she's the face of it. I'm I'm the, the faceless voice on this. Anyways, should Mom? I, should, I, <laughs> should I be using because I, 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 I just have like a, a drip coffee maker. Should I be using something else? What's let me no. talk about the preparation? So okay, that's a, fine. To a use. drip brewer is fine. Yeah. So you want like a medium grind? Do you use like a, me- a reusable mesh filter? I have. There's like a mesh filter, and then I do put a, a coffee filter. You put a in paper there filter in there as well. It gets, it gets messy. You, so you, what else you should do? Ooh. This is a fun fact. If you use a, a paper, paper filter. No, that's rubber. Water doesn't. No, the purpose of condoms is that fluids don't pass through them, Sorry. Amy. <laughs> I love you so much. Work. I just touched her thigh. Six. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting canceled. Um, you should wet your paper filter. Now, why is that? To get the paper taste out of it. Oh, my God. Any yeah. loose paper particles from the mashing paper cutting process are still on and in that filter. You should run water through it. Wet the filter before you use it. Interesting. Now let me ask you this: Have you heard of using eggshells to cut the acidity, like putting the eggshells in the grind? Have you heard of this? I have heard of this. I I've never buy better coffee. If you don't like the acidity of your coffee, buy a different roast. Like there's different roasts of coffee that yeah. can tamper um, acidity. That, I, I was told this over the holidays. Uh, I was I went up to Michigan to visit my my girlfriend's family, and so we 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 were given like Folgers at like the motel we were staying at, and it was not Folgers is awful. And then my girlfriend's mom was like, "Oh, uh, here, take eggshells. Use this in your coffee. It'll help cut the acidity." So it was like a low low like I didn't. Didn't have access to better coffee, but it did. I, it was a noticeable difference of the acidity to use eggshells. Interesting. That was the first time I ever heard of it. I've never done that myself. I've heard of that, but I've never done it. Um, I've yeah. never heard of that. I've heard of like eggshells being like ground up and used in makeup in like the 1600s or something like that. Well, but... as soon as I learned it, eggs went up to five dollars uh, a, a, so a, a crate. <laughs> so I was like, this is I can't not do this. I'll just anyway. get better coffee. <laughs> it's um. So yeah, different regions of the world have there's kind of three major coffee growing regions. There's Latin America, Africa, and then like um. In, in Asia, like out in like Indonesia, the Pacific, right? Um, and so, and different areas of the world tend to produce coffees with generally different flavors, right? So uh, my, my preference is for African coffees. That's where you can get more of like the fruity floral notes in a coffee. Mm. Whereas um, I find Asian coffees to be more acidic, um, which, and I, I also don't love the acidity in my coffees. That's why this eggshell thing, if you... If it's verified by Joel, like I'm I, it, it was like a noticeable, and this is like Folgers, so we're talking like bottom of the barrel, but it was like a noticeable difference. Like this taste because yeah, we did not have like we just had like they just gave us like powdered cream. We're in a very small town in like Michigan. Yeah, did not have a lot of options. I couldn't like run down to the store kind of thing. Yeah, so that's yeah. So different areas of the world will will produce and like um, Latin American coffees are typically more earthy tasting. So that's kind of like your general. And granted, there are. You know, that's just the kind of like the general guidelines that that like beginner level coffee. Like I'm not a super coffee expert. There's people way more than all. I like to think of myself as a jack of all trades. I know a little bit about a lot of stuff, uh, just enough to be like interesting at a dinner party. And then you ask a follow up question. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> so like uh, my, one of the questions I have on here is, uh, what can I say at a cocktail party about your topic? So what would be a cool thing to say at a cocktail party about coffee? Um, something I say about coffee at cocktail parties is... You have it. I'm sorry I'm still talking so fast. I've had 16 shots of espresso today. <laughs> I say that a lot, actually. I'm sorry I destroyed your bathroom. I had 16 shots of espresso today. You know, that's something interesting that we're not talking about right sorry, now. Sorry I painted the wall in your spouter room. I find that diff- <laughs> brewing, different brewing styles affect whether or not I'm going to shit myself. Oh, this I, is a game changer. What's a brewing style? Like, okay, so you've got espresso... Which is steam? Well, no, that's the, you steam the milk for like a like an espresso based like a latte. You'd steam the milk, but like so, it's it's coffee under pressure, forced through grounds, mm. right? So a uh, a fine grind, fine ish grind, not as fine as Turkish coffee, but finer than uh, like a brewer. And you uh, pressure. It's uh, you have to force the water through the grinds, um, and then 
or the grounds. And then you've got like a, a, a standard drip brewer. That's like a, you know, your coffee. A percolate. A, a, there's a, perc a percolator. Is that different? There is diff that is different, yes. Okay. You've got a French press, which um, is like a, st almost like a tea. That's most akin to like tea we, brewing. We you had let a it French steep. press when we first got married and I, I broke that motherfucker real quick. Do you hate it? No, I just can't make coffee with glass before I've had coffee. <laughs> I've got jazz hands. <laughs> it is very hard. The Nespresso sounds perfect to you because you pop a pot and you hit go. Like that's, and I do love my Nespresso. Don't okay. get me wrong. I interrupted you. No. So which one makes you um, paint the wall? Personally. <laughs> the, the, the quote is, Amy, it looks like a homeless man <laughs> destroy this toilet. Yeah. If, if Are you we want me still to destroy even still your married? Home, <laughs> serve me drip coffee. Drip coffee. Drip coffee? I can handle all the espresso in the world. Okay. Like one cup of like black drip coffee. I got to go. And then the flip. Yeah. And then there's also cold brew, which is kind of like the new fascination in coffee. Coffee's always brewed hot. But because of the roasting process, coffee is generally like anti or not antibacterial, but, but bacteria and parasite free because of the roasting process. You already have heated the beans to kill anything in them. Um, so you can grind it and brew it cold because it's not a, whereas you can't cold brew tea without some sort of purification process involved. Like, cause there could be things growing in cause it. Cause there could be growing things in the leaves. Yeah. They may have been dried, but if you're brewing like fresh tea, there's certain factors that you can't decontaminate cold brew tea, but that is another growing trend. It's cold brew tea. Um, fun fact on how they're trying to sanitize cold brew tea UV lights. Boom. Mind blown. <laughs> so cool. So you put um, your iPhone in there and your tea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just sanitize everything. Um, but so cold brew coffee is instead of brewing it with hot water, like iced coffee is hot coffee that has been iced. That's how they, they do iced coffee. Um cold brew is steeped cold. It's cold water put into grounds of coffee. And so it takes a longer you have to let it sit for longer because the heat helps speeds the extraction process of flavor out of the coffee so with cold brew starbucks their policy is 20 hours it steeps it what's water, the benefit coffee sits why to, this is it just because flavor. people will pay more money is it less bitter it, it, at the end of the day it's going to depend on the quality of your beans the quality of your water not how you're distilling it like yeah, if you if you don't like the flavor of this cold brew, try a different cold brew roast. You know, it's like they'll, they're specifying roasts for cold brew now. It's still kind of like a newish. Like I mean, it's been going on for a while. Don't get me wrong, but it's still like newish to a lot of the com coffee community, and so they're still figuring it out. People are now specializing roasts for cold brewing. I've heard. Okay, so um, I did a lot of research on addiction uh, during the pandemic, mm, not because of margaritas. Uh, what are you and drinking right now? margarita <laughs> and, and um they said that like pe like if you give a child alcohol it will not drink it it tastes awful to them and if you give coffee to a child they won't drink it and no one would drink it until you they get the connection in their brain that they're gonna get the high so all of this dancing we're doing around coffee and we're doing around alcohol we're our brains are just um being triggered to get the high and that's why we like the flavor of a martini or a cold brew because our brain's excited for that hit of our addiction well it's funny because we develop we describe both of those flavors alcohol and coffee as bitter flavors right because there's what you can taste sour bitter sweet umami i'm missing one salt semen. Or, yeah and and salt. and semen salty semen yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are the Battery five. Acid. Those are the five receptors that you have on your tongue, right? And they're all chemical reactions, and the the ones that trigger bitter things uh, genetically were developed to prevent us from eating poisonous things. That's because yeah. typically poison in nature, things that are bitter are toxic to us, so we have a receptor for them to prevent us. Whereas, like capsaicin, the thing that makes spicy food spicy, right? It's a chemical compound that we it makes our our you know mouths feel numb and, and we taste spicy food because we so peppers developed capsaicin kept specifically in their seeds because 
our stomach acids are too strong. So you've seen the peppers in a, or the seeds in a jalapeno, the very thin shell on them. That shell breaks down in our stomach acid. We are not carriers of this seed. We can't go poop. You can't eat a jalapeno, seeds and all. Go poop outside and make a jalapeno plant, right? Like you, you get, your, not your with stomach, that attitude. Your, st- <laughs> your stomach acid is too strong for it. We're not supposed to eat them for the plant's livelihood, right? Yeah. So we, so jalapenos develop capsaicin so that we stop eating them. It's supposed to be unpleasant to us, so to prevent us from eating it. Do you know what animal can't taste spicy food? Birds. Birds don't have receptors for capsaicin. They can't get the same reaction to what because their stomach acid isn't as strong as ours, Aww. so they can spread jalapeno seeds, right? So they're so they are the intended eater. Who's supposed to eat Twinkies <clears throat> then? Us. If you eat are, a Twinkie and you go out in the Are backyard. you saying something cream filled needs to be eaten? Because that's my specialty. <laughs> I want you to make a Twinkie tree in the backyard. I need Marcus said go. Got it. <laughs> Done. But so same with same with better things. However, plants have learned. We have developed, right, uh, plants just in, in, in order to not be eaten by us, even though coffee is not toxic. I mean, like enough caffeine will kill you, right? But like even though like coffee is not toxic to us now like it still tastes bitter that is remnants of the coffee plant trying to prevent us from eating it <coughs> so we're not supposed to eat the coffee and we just do and it makes us high we do and it, yeah we get a great reaction like cocaine from it. and it's addictive chocolate yeah it's the you you yeah cheese it's how caffeine <laughs> works you ask great question it blocks the melatonin receptors <coughs> what yeah that that's was my understanding. Oh, no, no, not the melatonin. No, that's melanin. Oh. Melatonin. But no, not melatonin. I'm forgetting the name of the enzyme now. Or not the enzyme. The, oh, fuck. Cut this out because I sound like an idiot now. Everyone's an idiot. I, I told you I know enough about something to sound like mildly educated. And then you asked me a follow-up question. I'm like, okay. no. But yeah, it blocks the receptors. I think maybe it is melatonin because it's a, a, a receptors in your body that. Melanin. Okay, melatonin. Melatonin is a naturally occurring thing. Yeah. So yes, I could see yeah. that. Yeah, it blocks the melatonin receptor so that you don't feel tired. But I think that there's another chemical reaction involved in that too. It blocks something else as well. So you're not happy? I, I disagree. I feel so That's happy. serotonin. Oh. Dopamine. You're thinking of those. Melatonin things. makes you sleepy. Ah, so it blocks like, the receptor so that the melatonin in your body can't bind to it and make you feel sleepy. That's And, and jacks up your circadian rhythms. And so you don't sleep at night and you never get really rested. Who's sleeping anyway? All not, the fun stuff happens at night. Why oh would I sleep? God. Not you. Okay. I have a little quizzy quiz. Okay. Um, I don't know how long are we going? We've got time. Oh, yeah. Good. I've got this. I got a quiz about um, what I want to find out because I am really impressed with how much you know about coffee. I didn't realize. I just knew you were a lovely person. Well, you used to be a lovely person and now you're going to not be a lovely no, person. Be, no. And we're I'm s- for the birds because I'm spicy now. Agent Switch. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> I wish. I wish I knew more about Marvel. Switch. Yeah, that's your Marvel character. I love it. That's the thing. I right? don't know where Agent came from, but it's it's. I, I, you had to spice it up. His Royal Highness Switch H R H. I want to be the first gay James Bond career Ooh. goal. It's out there now. <gasps> the openly gay James Bond that they. Jimmy Bondage. <laughs> <laughs> he comes with his own handcuffs. Oh my gosh! Yes. He handcuffed himself. Oh no! His, uh, poppers shaken, not stirred. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to go for a ride in my Aston Martin? <laughs> Money, shaken, penny. That hit me in a minute. Help me pick out my outfit. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Are M we... stands for. Mm. <laughs> I just I the idea of all of the all of just all of the gadgets Q is giving that, you. Like, the Q branch is just a sex shop. Just, yeah, it's just dildos and pop. He's like, and this you're like, are there poppers in there? Yeah, there's poppers in there. There's yeah, definitely yeah. some more uh, poppers. Yeah. <laughs> what happens when I press this button? The dildo inflates. Yeah. Like you know. What I'm yeah. <laughs> like an airbag. It's for safety yeah. and. For He's sex. like, here's a harness. You're like, what's this for? Going out? Yeah. <laughs> just you know. Just to wear. <laughs> Honestly, it's fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Have you ever been to Comic Con? No, I've never been to. Yo, you know what's so funny? I lived in Atlanta, or so we moved to the Atlanta area when I was 12. I started college at 17. And I remember getting on the train, I took the train to school. And I remember getting on the train one morning and being like, what the fuck is happening? And so I got to my chemistry class and I was like, y'all. Everybody was dressed as Batman on the train this morning. I don't know what it was. They're like, oh, it's Dragon Con. 
I had never heard of it. <laughs> so no, I've never been to any sort of Comic Con, Dragon Con, any any of You're the above. Con the cons. I've never been to a, a convention of nerds. Okay, have you ever owned a, a unicycle? I do own a unicycle. <laughs> In back to back present tense. <laughs> I still do. Yeah. Continue. The, 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 the wheel is flat, but I. Who's got a bike pump? Let's let's go. <laughs> I have a bike pump. I cannot ride it. It's really hard. It's really hard. And you have a boyfriend now, so you you're, you're busy. You can't be learning a unicycle. That's for I can't between hurt lovers. My butt any more than <laughs> already happens. Like, oh snap! So, uh, unicycle. Uh, so in summer. So just as a fun summer gift, and then my birthday, and then Christmas, back to back to back, six months of gifts for my mother. I was fourteen or fifteen. She made me stilts, like on a with a table saw. My mom. Home made me stilts. Oh my god! For my birthday, bought me a unicycle. Oh my god! And then that Christmas, I got a set of juggling balls in my stocking. Oh, she was trying to send you she off to the circus. S- she wanted me to run away. The middle child. I was like gotta, fifteen, she was like, "Get out! Go to the circus!" Go I can't believe your- she da, made. Da, 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 da. I, I can then juggle. They're I all can't. upset. You're gay. That's on her. That's on. Okay. She also introduced me to musicals. So. Oh well, she's yeah. just a good mother then. We love musicals. Okay. Have you ever had a woodwind instrument? No. A clip-on tie? Uh, I have worn a clip-on tie before, yeah. Can you tie a regular tie now? I, oh, yeah. I, I had a clip-on tie when I was like a kid. Okay. I'll allow it. I started wearing real ties when I was 15. Well, I learned how to tie a tie when I was I think it's like coming out uh, for debutante balls, not sexual identity or whatever. Uh, for gentlemen when they stop wearing a clip-on tie. You're like, I'm ready to get boned now. I, well, and it's like when, like the debutante, you know what a debutante thing is? Like, yeah. Yeah, like, like I'm 16. I've seen Gilmore Girls. I'm 18. Is it 18 now? <laughs> 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 I'm ready for marriage. Um. Yeah, no, uh, I had to wear, I was on the varsity tennis team and on game days we had to dress up in a suit and tie. Or, uh, sorry, a, a shirt and tie. We had to wear That's a so collared shirt. Death Star Lego. No. <laughs> I did have a lot of Star Wars Legos, but never the Death Star. A soldering iron. No. A cape. I can't be trusted with hot things. I own <laughs> multiple capes. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. <laughs> but they were mostly all, they mostly, no, entirely sketch comedy oriented. Sure. Okay. I was a superhero <laughs> called O-Man. The O stand, stood for orgasm. And he stopped crimes by forcing people to have an orgasm. Like. He was like, bow, 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 is, and they were like, oh. You do, did you know that that's literally a, a Matt Trey or Matt Stone and Trey Parker, the creators of South Park, made a movie called Orgasmo, and that is that is what that is about. I had no idea. I ripped off a joke. I, I haven't seen it's it. It's a really parallel thinking. It's that yeah. well, it's it's about one of them. I forget who, which one of the the blonde one. He is a Mormon going door to door. Uh, and then he has like he knows how to fight. He gets cast into porno because he has to make money. Uh, and, and but the the porno is orgasmo, and he has a, a ray that makes people orgasm. Okay. okay, so that's good to know. That's yeah. we're we're cutting that sketch from the. You don't want to get a lawyer team. phone call. No, well, I don't. If I know once I'm made aware of someone having a similar premise almost identical joke yeah. uh, um, that's a really i feel like i mean don't feel bad about it but, uh, you know about it now but yeah like, i know about it now yeah it's a very obscure movie yeah. back in the day i don't think many people even know that's yeah no one well, no one on the sketch comedy team told me so take that map part oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, have you ever sorry? owned a ferret no have you ever held a ferret no not that i can no i don't a think harry so. potter wand i do not own a harry potter wand Oh, my children do. I would love to, though. They're I've never fun. been. To, I want to go to Harry Potter World. Like, I want to uh, go to my. More, what, what's it? I'll go with you. My kids are too old. That, yeah. Take me. Let's, let's go. go. Okay. Yeah. I've never been to Universal uh, Studios. A coin collection. I so sort of, but it was inherited. That doesn't count. Sword. Okay. A sword. No. So yeah, you're straight. Or like he's a gay man, not a lesbian. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> good. What did I do with the sword? I, I didn't want to get into fencing, but it was uh, the for the, the outfit. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I love a mask that I can like, partially see through, but I can't make out your face. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of sexy. I love some anonymity. And in you the don't bedroom. know what gender they are. It's got I the tight pants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, an aquarium. 
I've been to an aquarium. No. Oh, no, I own an aquarium. No, I did win a betta fish at a carnival one time. And you were the... And my sister's like, cat... I'm already the beta. So who's going to be the alpha? <laughs> my sister's cat murdered my fish. I oh. walked in from either tennis or piano were my two high school activities. Um, my parents wanted me to do something competitive in high school. So they signed me up for piano, but I played competitively. <laughs> a still a solo sport. Okay. Um, and my sister's was um, cat was on the counter batting my beta fish against the side of my tank. Oh, just had to play I didn't, with it. I didn't do fish after that because it was really sad. I'm sorry. Do you know sorry. Morse code? I did. <gasps> I learned about Morse code in seventh grade. I don't know why in seventh grade, but that's when I did. And so we learned, my friends and I sat in a trifecta in Miss Valdez's English class. By then it was eighth grade, actually. And we would wink and blink messages across the room in Morse code. Oh my God. That's adv advanced. Until, because dot dash, dot dash. You know, so you got, you got dot dash. So we were able to wink and blink mess. So I, you'd just be staring at someone, it looks like they're having a seizure and you're just <laughs> taking little notes. You're just talking shit about the other students we with your eyeballs. That takes I eye rolling teenager <laughs> to the next level. And I'm the one that got caught. I got caught uh, finally. Do you have something in your eye or something? Why are you freaking... And I was like, no, I don't. And she was, are you guys Morse coding with your eyes across the room? <laughs> yeah. And she's like, as long as I don't see it during a test. And then she just let us keep doing it. Oh, my God. And kept doing it. So wait, which class was this? It was an English class, like a lit class. Oh, and then you majored in English, so you were fine. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even a big deal. My degree was in, though, not in literature, in rhetoric. Because I wanted a degree in how to win Facebook battles over politics. Oh, perfect. How's it going? Um, I've definitely not changed any minds, and it's been a waste of my time. And my little Apple Watch likes to tell me that my heart rate is at exercise levels <laughs> because I get so mad sometimes yeah. that my heart gets real fast. It's, I mean, the, the pandemic the was a really great time to explore this avenue of Facebook trying to change people's minds about things. There's one in particular. Who is it that has the, the wonderful joke? Oh, um, Olivia uh, Steele. Atlanta comic, fantastic, uh, kind of kooky energy. We love her. Um, she has yes. a joke about her mom on, a, like, her hometown's Facebook page, like, causing shenanigans. And that inspired me to join uh, the town I grew up in here in Georgia, their Facebook, local Facebook page, just to see what was up. And it's rural North Georgia, and people like to say some shit about politics. Mm -hmm. And I like to, I have a literal degree in how to argue. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> you just so, like sharpening your knives like a chef. Like This is like, <laughs> it's genuinely fun for me to, because like we learned like how to. It, you should have been a lawyer. That Well, that was the plan. That was the plan with a rhetoric degree. But my mom was a lawyer. But like I can walk someone fully into a circle until what they say, like I've done it on a handful of occasions where it's like you can walk someone all the way around to your back to your point. But you can't take the Chardonnay out of their hands. So and they're then at not the end they're notice. like, <laughs> at the end they just go like, well, fuck Biden. And then they like block you. It's great. You never change any minds. It's a yeah. complete waste of my time, but I have so much fun doing it. I'm glad you enjoy that. I, this, I do. This is perfect for your new persona. Spicy Matthew. Spicy Matthew. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Okay. How are we doing on time? Rapid fire question. Go. Okay. Um, your wedding at Disney, yay or nay? Absolutely not. <laughs> Do you have a framed puzzle? No. Have you ever said huzzah and meant it? <laughs> no, not meant it. I've said it, but I've never meant it. Ha okay. Um, have you ever, was there ever a time in your life where you refused to let your parents take photographs of, or your parents refused to take photographs of you? No. My dad's like an amateur photographer. He followed us around the cameras all the time. Have you ever uh, made your own clothes? No, I have no skills that produce a tangible result. <laughs> have you ever, okay, have backups on a hard drive and because the cloud doesn't count? Um, n not, I have backups on a hard drive, but not for that reason. But oh, because wink. they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're nudes and I don't oh. want them to leak. <laughs> 
secret hard drive. I don't drive need a cyber hack of your issue. hard drive. Hey oh. Oh, oh, have you ever written a fan fiction? No. Oh, for a show. Fan friction. Were you a part of that as well? I don't know if you were. I never heard of that one. I don't know if you did that with us. I couldn't remember if you were there. It was it's right up your alley. No, it was um two fandoms. We had to write fan fiction about them colliding. I we did Quentin Tarantino movies and Star Wars. So you had to write a narrative. So we redid essentially we redid my team redid Star Wars. But no, it's only sh- oh, you only shoot the feet. Is what is this? Is that what the crossover is? <laughs> no, sorry. We redid the, the narrative of Kill Bill with Star Wars. We plugged Star Wars characters mm. into Kill Bill. That's that's essentially what our story was. Yeah. This goes along to the next question. Have you ever said that like that's not canon? Because my Star Wars nerd son says it all the fucking. Time. I have said that's not canon. I didn't I realize you were this much of a nerd. I like. I, I have a lot of like weird nerdy things that I keep. Your your list of nerd. Possibility questions is a very interesting one because some of those I don't I wouldn't consider nerdy. It's just kind of weird and eccentric. But also, you know, that's what this podcast is for is finding out there's 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 a wide ranging things. We're all nerdy for different things, and I didn't know you had a PhD in coffee and tea and brewing styles. What a treat, right? I literally learned a lot about coffee, and I'm gonna go buy a grinder. I stopped microwaving my coffee. At because of your friendship with me. Yeah, which... you're not supposed to grind your coffee. Yeah, and you should grind coffee as you use it. I can I recommend a vacuum sealed container and a grinder. Um I got those things. I have a beautiful glass one that's next to my coffee pot that's decorative. Does that work? Is it like an actual vacuum? No, or... fudge no. Okay, then no. <laughs> <laughs> And it's glass, so the sunshine's getting on the, the ground. That's probably not good for them either. Oh, I don't know, why I don't is okay. okay? We have rapid fire questions. What else we got? Oh, I, we're all, I think. Um, have you ever brewed your own mead? No. Yeah. Do you have a Disney tattoo? That's it. Those no. are all my questions. I, I have no tattoos. Not yet. Amy Brown's gonna get me drunk and tattoo me. That's what I just heard. I'm gonna. I, it's illegal, but what I will would, do it. What would you tattoo me on anywhere? Go. I didn't mind needles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I actually asked. I was uh, I was hosting at Laughing Skull, and I asked the audience, like, okay, we're all gonna get matching tattoos tonight. And I came out in between each audience member. I'm like, okay, what are we gonna get? What are we gonna get? Okay, I think we should get a peach emoji because we're all in Georgia, and that's all that a peach emoji means, right? Ha! Uh, yeah, that's about as well as that joke did in in real time too. <laughs> I don't know if you were intentionally leaning into. Now you're intentionally leaning into not knowing what the dirty joke is. Were you lying then? Or are you lying? No, now? no. I was surprised. I was reading all of the comments to my husband last night when we were on our date. I can't like, That's what I'm, doing. I'm passing out right now. You want to come over to my house? <laughs> like, like, husband, look, I'm a sought after commodity. <laughs> You didn't know Wait. that? No, no. I just, I have teenage boys. And- Hop on the comment section on this podcast <laughs> on YouTube and tell Amy Brown how hot she is. Thank you so much. Don't, and don't be creepy. Take your shirt off. Take your shirt no. off. <laughs> like you say, don't be, hashtag Matthew I like too. how you said don't be, he says don't be creepy well, and your immediate creepy. response is. Like, take it off. You have them, you're so handsome. You have to share it with the world. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have it's to. It's only if you, you want to. to. Yes. And, just pu- I'll like pour some coffee grounds I feel on push it. Push and pull between. Like, no, I'm not, I don't. Amy show actually it, knows how to edit. I'm only here just does. to tell Amy, like you got to calm it down. <laughs> you're just here. Yeah. I keep, you're to keep Amy from. Yeah. Doing. I have a I have a squirt bottle that no one can see. I'll just. <laughs> I need that. I need that. I'm golly. Oh, dirty. Joke. All right. Off I camera. think we've done it. I think we've done it. Uh, Thank you so much. Do you, I, do you want to plug anything? I don't know when this is coming out, though. I run a monthly show at Roll Call Theater in Atlanta called Karaoke Comedy. That's something I'm nerdy about. I know. Doing you things that scare you. Karaoke. Um, I hate singing in front of people, so that's what we do. We tell a joke. We sing a song about that joke. Um, Karaoke Comedy, Roll Call Theater. Every in Atlanta. Third Friday of the month at 10 p.m. It's our current slot, but we, we have moved around a couple times, so keep an eye out for us. Um, my Instagram is at Mr. Mr. Matthew English. Matthew with two T's, English language, no period after MR. My Twitter is at Mr. Matt English. Find me. Find you. Find You're me. a Ask delight. You are a questions. tasty treat and the world needs you. You're a star and the world needs your voice. I keep saying it to everyone I meet and they're like, ma'am, I'm just buying groceries. I can't help your friend get famous. So I don't know. I'm doing what I can. <laughs> All right, yeah, I don't have anything. Amy Brown comedy. 
do you have anything, Joel? You always have a bunch of stuff. I mean, I just plug my. I have you can a do it at the end with a credit. Yeah. yeah, I have a nerdy <laughs> podcast called Oddity Roadshow. It's an actual play podcast where we play Monster of the Week. It's a comedy horror. Uh, sh- you know, check check it out if if you like role playing games or or not. I don't. You know, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm not. I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to beg. Please, God, listen. listen I need the validation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. I'm, I'm dying over here. <laughs> it's just a voice. Oh. If if you guys, if you guys want to know what Joel looks like. That's you extra. can't tell on the other one either because my other podcast it's just audio only. There's no video. Well, you can find me honestly. You can, there's I'm I'm online a lot. You can it's really easy to find me. You can Google me and you can see me do a bunch of stupid stuff. What would I have to post? What would what what tweet could I tweet right now that would enrage you so much that you would try and fight me mm-hmm. in a Twitter battle? Oh, I don't really. Know. I don't know. About 140 characters chicken. less. I don't. I don't like to engage people online that make me mad. I just kind of ignore them. Okay. But sassy Matthew yeah. needs spicy to come. Matthew. Spicy, sorry, <laughs> spicy Matthew. Here's the thing: if you, re- if you really want me to get 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 at you, you got to say something like a dumb, stupid take. Not like that. I'm like, oh, you're wrong. But like, just like fake and rage. I love that. I'll do that all day. Oh I'll get, yeah. I'll get That's fake fun. mad and fake argue with you. But if you say like actual terrible things, I'm just like, well, I'm gonna go ignore this now. But yeah, anyways, That's way healthier than what I did. Yeah, I would like to plug the podcast Nerdy Four, which is a really good podcast hosted by Amy Brown, too. Oh. Uh, I'm a producer on it. Oh. Uh, and if you're listening What's to this. right now? Oh, my oh God. no. <laughs> Plot twist. That's what you've been watching slash listening to. It's calls coming from inside the dress up closet. That's where we I are. I did immediately walk into Amy's oh. bedroom when I thought we were filming this. Oh, shit. The One part at the end. Okay, so Matthew and I are doing a comedy show on Saturday night, and we have to dress up in costumes. costumes. It's a promedy comedy show. We have to dress in prom clothes. And now that this podcast is we're done, we're going to go into my costume closet and pull out dresses and suits and see, and see who ends up in what. <laughs> Good night. Good night.